Hear me fine, right? Okay, cool. So, uh, my name is Douglas Hurd. Um, I came on board with uh, at Cisco about a year and a half ago through the acquisition of Sourcefire, which was a network security company. So that's my background. Um, I was with Sourcefire for 10 years, and um, happy to be part of Cisco's cybersecurity business unit now. It's a lot happening. Um, firstly, Cisco Security Technical Alliances. This is a program, right? Uh, it's not a product, but my, my goal at Cisco is to basically turn it into a product so that the salespeople can communicate uh, with customers and channel partners uh, easily with regard to all the different integration options you have across the Cisco portfolio. And by integration, I mean uh, Cisco technologies sharing data about uh, event data or endpoint data with other security products, even some companies we compete with, right? And also about pulling third-party data into the Cisco security products to make them smarter, help them tune policies, help them um, help improve security for our customers. So that's my mission, right, is to educate the sales force and our customers on this program um, because there's all kinds of goodies in the product set that not, not too many people really understand, and so I'm changing that, right? So what I'm gonna cover in the next 20, 25 minutes is what is the program, you know, why it matters, why you should care. Uh, what the integration points are, I'm gonna gloss over um, some of the, the more uh, significant integration points in the portfolio, and by integration points, I generally mean APIs, uh, proprietary or otherwise, or open APIs, and where you can get more information. Um, I've been in the security business a long time. When I first got into it about 18, 19 years ago, I remember seeing a presentation and the guy said the industry's gonna consolidate and eventually there'll only be a handful of security companies. That was almost 20 years ago. And last time I checked, there were about 700 companies in the business. That's about how many there were 10, 15 years ago. So there will be companies that offer big, broad security portfolios like Cisco and Intel and a few others. Um, but this industry is not gonna, there's always gonna be a ton of vendors in the business because I think the, the, the challenge evolves so quickly, no one vendor you know, can be the perfect defense against all the different stuff that we're challenged with. So there's always gonna be a need, I think, um, for a, a powerful security portfolio offer like Cisco to play well with a lot of third parties, especially some of the smaller uh, niche companies that do things really well that we just don't do. Right? So the, the era of the closed black box is you need this box to solve this problem. Those days are over, right? You need an open platform. It's all about the platform nowadays. Not the box, not the application, but the platform. So CSTA is really an umbrella program that takes a bunch of programs in the security business unit, some more evolved than others, and, and puts a brand name on it so that we can talk coherently about what we offer in terms of interoperability. So you have the ICE ecosystem. There are about 15 or 20 partners that are built, uh, built integration with ICE. I ran the Sourcefire Technology Pro Partner Program, which is about 35 partners. Um, there are partnerships around ThreatGrid, the, uh, the malware analysis platform. So there's too much there for us to coherently um, market it and explain it to customers. We're rolling it all up under a single program called CSTA. Right? Why should you care? Well, I've gotten into this a little bit already. None of our customers use less than a couple of dozen security vendors' products. They might use three or four or five or 10 products from us, but they're probably gonna use dozens of other security products from all kinds of other vendors. And when you can get this stuff to work together, especially when you can build some automation, customers can respond more quickly to critical security events, right? Um, and, and, and responding quickly is important because that helps you minimize the damage of any type of compromise that you've had. Ultimately, if, if we do our job right in the alliances program, um, we partner with the right companies, you can, you'll have better security, you'll lower the amount of time it takes you to respond to critical security events, and hopefully that lowers the cost of ownership or helps you get more value out of our products. Here's the security portfolio. It's a lot of stuff, right? I'm not gonna go through each one of these, but there are a lot of integration points in many of these products that you might not even know about. For starters, right? Here's kind of the high points, about a dozen different integration points in the portfolio. Um, I came from Sourcefire, right? My whole world, and today my day job, I spend a good chunk of my time on eStreamer. This is an API that allows us to move really, really detailed event information into about a dozen different platforms, like ArcSight, like Splunk, like LogRhythm, Tier 3, you name it. We work with just about every sim out there, 
but the quality of the data that we can push into those analytics platforms is a lot better than syslog, way more powerful, and I'll get into that. There are a bunch of other APIs that allow us to ingest information as well as share information. So over the next kind of six or eight slides, I'm gonna run through a couple of these and give you an idea how they can be used um, by people, by, by, by folks like you if you're not using any of these already. I want to highlight, though, I want to drive this point home. You know, we're, we're committed to an open framework as much as possible. You know, short of not being competitive, we're going to compete with all kinds of companies. And I mentioned some of the companies, I'm sorry, we're going to, we're going to work with some of the companies that we even compete with, right? Wherever there's a mutual customer that can end up with something better if we work with a third party and it's not to our detriment, we're going to do it. Um, before I get into the API specifically, this is what the security partner ecosystem looks like. Now you can't see each one of these logos, but the point here is, well maybe you can from where you're sitting, it depends. The point is a lot of technologies out there fill areas that we just don't fill. We're not in the vulnerability management business at all. We know a lot about threats, we know a lot about vulnerabilities. It's central to how we um, keep our platforms up to date so that you can detect the latest and, and worst stuff, right? So we're all about vulnerabilities and threats and understanding you know, how to mitigate those threats. But we're not in the scanning business. So it makes sense for us to partner with all the companies that do a really good job at scanning and, and auditing and inventorying um, the different devices and what, what their vulnerabilities are. Full packet capture. It's not something you can buy from the security business unit, right? But full packet capture, getting hold of full session data to analyze once you've looked at the packet you have with an IPS event, for example, that's like going from binoculars to a Hubble telescope, right? It makes sense for us to work with companies that are in that business. So those are just a couple examples. And I mentioned a whole bunch of SIMs and analytics platforms. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to get your Cisco data into those platforms because we know 95% of our customers use one of those. I hope I'm not too loud. I'm kind of yelling because I can't even hear myself, right? Good volume. You don't want me to talk like this? Or oh, I won't scream. All right, thanks. So eStreamer, eStreamer is, a, is an API, it's a binary protocol, it's proprietary, it moves a ton of data from the Firesight Management Center, formerly known as Defense Center, I gotta fix that, um, up into a SIM or analytics platform of your choice. Now this is a lot different than Syslog or a lot different than Ceph. It's structured data, it's compressed, we can move five, 10,000 events a second into a platform. Not, very few of our customers have any requirements like that but the capability's there. It's secure, we know that if we ship a bunch of event data to a platform, we know it gets there, because it's TCP. This is a key differentiator for SourceFire over the years, when we were competing against all sorts of, all sorts of other IPS vendors. Host input API. We can bring third-party vulnerability information into the Firesight management platform, so that we can combine what we learn about the network passively through our Firesight uh, process, where we map uh, every IP address that we're protecting, we know what the operating system is, the protocol services, applications that device is running, so we know what it's vulnerable to, but more importantly, we know what it's not vulnerable to, so we correlate IPS events against that list of vulnerabilities, and we can score those events so that you focus on the ones that can take down your business, not the ones that are just noise. We can reduce event false positives by over 90% using this technology, and being able to leverage third-party uh, vulnerability data from Qualys and Tenable and Rapid and all those guys allows our solution to do it a little bit more intelligently. It also allows us to tune stuff automatically. Policy management and tuning IPS is very, very uh, labor intensive. Remediation API. We can hand critical event data to some device that wants to take action, right? I'm not talking about eStreamer and sending thousands of events. I'm saying maybe I want to tell my um, my forensic analysis tool from Guidance, their, uh, their end case technology, that I think a machine's been compromised. So if, some, if, if I see something compromised in a certain part of my network, I'm gonna send some information about that host to a third party application, so it can go and do its thing automatically. Rather than looking at one screen, copying an IP address, looking at another screen, pasting it in, actioning and so on. So automation, remediation is all about, API is all about automation. Maybe somebody wants to do some 3D modeling based on the information we have about the network. Our JDBC interface allows people to access our database. It's an open schema. You can go in and access all the event information as well as access all the host information. Things like 
are using third-party report tools like Crystal Reports. Some 3D modeling applications are leveraging this API. Again, it's all about allowing customers to use other tools they have. Um, right. Now, getting into the integration points for ICE. This is the Identity Services Engine. Right? So ICE is this, is this onboarding technology that allows you to, to manage um, all kinds of remote, handheld, laptops, tablets, anything that moves in the network, right? To get really, really, really specific about what part of the network they can access, when they can access it. It's more than, here's your name, here's your authentication, you get to go onto this VLAN. It's really about who are you, what are you, where are you, when are you, and how are you, how are you trying to onboard the network and I can use all of those things to automatically assign you to parts of the network that you can have access to. It just eliminates dealing with hundreds and hundreds of VLANs in the traditional kind of Active Directory domain-based way of mapping people to where they get to go, right? PXGrid is basically an infrastructure that's part of ICE, part of Identity Services Engine, that goes a little further than simply allowing us to send event data or ingesting um, host data from a uh, uh, a handheld um, mobile device management technology like Mobile Iron, right? You see, with, uh, with PX Grid and ICE, we can leverage any of the third, any of the BYOD technologies, or EDM or MDM technologies you use, and we can make their policies part of the policy that determines whether or not those devices get to go on the network, and if they go on the network, where they get to go, when they get to go, and so on. So PX Grid is an open platform that basically it's like a message bus in my layman terms, right? It allows Cisco, as well as third-party applications, to share context, host data, event data, and any number of applications can communicate with this platform and subscribe to any subset of all the data that's in there. It's almost like SIM, but it's not, right? It, it's, it's a messaging platform that, that serves up context to any number of, of technologies that, that want to share it. So it's a many-to-many platform for sharing context as opposed to an API that simply says, I'm going to send data from me to you. So any to any. Let me just build through all this transition, right? So, so with PXGrid and ICE, basically three, three kind of cool problems get solved here, right? One is I can provide network context to customers and platforms, right? I know a lot, as ICE knows an awful lot about all the endpoints attaching to the network. I can make that data available to other technologies, right? Or I can leverage other endpoint technology to make smarter decisions about where you get to go on the network. Whoops, whoops. And ultimately, ICE can serve as kind of a middleware technology, if you will, between security technologies or analytics platforms in the, your entire Cisco network infrastructure. What, what we see starting to happen in the business now, another major change in cybersecurity, customers are becoming more and more open-minded about the notion of automatically remediating something. It's getting so nasty now with some, some of the malware compromises and all the data leakage that we're hearing about that the notion of having a security tool make a decision and go do something automatically, which always sounded cool, but let's face it, nobody ever wants anything to happen automatically on their network, especially, especially if it impacts how an application might run. Nobody wants to be the IT professional, security professional, that shut down the WebEx when the CEO is doing earnings, right? Yet we want, to, we want ways to respond really quickly to bad things when they happen, right? So ICE, it's a Cisco product, ICE actually has the ability to communicate with a lot of, with pretty much all of the Cisco networking infrastructure that's installed today, right? Through ICE, we can coordinate all kinds of control over the network. You'll hear a theme here, the network as a sensor. Well, the network can also be an enforcer if you have an intelligent way to use that. So through ICE, third-party tools, not Cisco tools, but third-party products could initiate changes on the network that radically change or quickly change how your Cisco infrastructure allows traffic or blocks traffic or quarantines traffic. So it's kind of the, the Uber network access control, but it's pervasive. So a recent acquisition uh, by the business unit was a company called ThreatGrid. ThreatGrid is an analytics platform. You give it malware, and it lets that malware execute, and it gives you back reams of information about that malware. And it provides a feed on all this malware so that you can subscribe to it and get information brought into your SIM or whatever your analytics platform is. 
and actually be up to date on all the, all the malware information that's been collected globally from all the different customers that use it, right? Now, um, AnyConnect also has an SDK, right? So you can build deployment capabilities into your deployment tools that allow uh, AnyConnect VPN to be deployed and set up when it gets to the machine that it's being deployed to. So this is just more extensibility that makes it real easy, hopefully, for the Cisco security technologies to fit in um, to your infrastructure. Um, I mentioned threat grid, okay. Um, any questions? All right. I'm gonna finish this early, so if you got questions, I can, I can take it afterwards. So watch this technology eventually. Um, we think we'll be partnered up with most of our SIM and analytics platforms. It has an API that allows you to, let's say you're looking at an event or you have a piece of malware on an analytics platform, you could right click and send the malware um, to Threat Grid, either cloud or you could have a local instance of it. And within about 30 or 40 seconds, everything that we know collectively about that piece of malware will be returned to your platform, either in the form of a document or on a screen. So there's an OEM model here as well where some, some technologies you may or may not use have embedded integration of Threat Grid into their product you're getting malware analysis and you don't even know that it's this tool. On the other hand, you could have your own instance of it and you would know that it's, it's this tool because it would be called Cisco Threat Grid. Um, one other area of product uh, that I wanna, I wanna cover here because there's a huge amount of confusion about what SSA is and what SSP is, right? SSP is a, pro, it's a platform and there's a little stand in the security pavilion, the security solution center down on the main expo floor there that talks about the Firepower 9300. It's a box, it's about that big and about that deep, and it, it can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? But it can run many different security products at the same time, and not all of them have to be sec Cisco security products. There's an ecosystem evolving around SSP where you can run a number of Cisco security applications, but also third-party applications like DDoS, for example. We're not in the DDoS business, right? So you can run something like Radware on that box in conjunction with our firewall, our IPS, and our anti-malware technology, and it allows you to serialize these applications and control the way the packets move through the box and apply policy to packets so that based on what one detection technology says, you may or may not want to subject that, that packet of data to the next security application. This is really sophisticated stuff, but it's built largely on SSA architecture, which, as I understand it, is what I just described, but in racks full of stuff, the traditional way of I need six different security applications, so I'm gonna go rack six different boxes. And now the network, the network administrator and the security administrator hate each other because the security person wants access to that stuff and that architecture. And the, ar the network architecture person is like, that's my rack of stuff, you're not going there. Well, like they say, the, the security, security people want their own infrastructure to work in. And this platform is designed to give the security buyer who wants to run a number of applications in a traditional uh, Cisco ar architecture, the ability to do it on their own terms in their own box. Because I think it's the security guys say to the rest of the people in IT, we're not happy until you're unhappy, right? We're not doing a good job unless you're angry. So it's a way to keep everybody happy, right? So the 9300 is a box that's down on the floor there. And again, it's got its own ecosystem built all around it. These are the different type of applications that we're building partnerships with, with a number of Cisco applications, but also third-party applications. And again, there might even be applications that we compete directly with. Right. And the platform is, it's, yes. What is the SSA? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not an expert on that. What was that? So, okay, the question is, what's the operating system on SSA? And I don't know the answer, but the operating system on the, uh, on the platform itself, um, it's, it's a Cisco operating system. I don't know what flavor it is. However, it can run, uh, you can virtualize many instances of the same application. So there is, there's this abstraction layer there that allows you to host multiple instances of an application not just multiple applications. 
So it is, it, it, it's, a, it's a hybrid approach to the traditional kind of uh, VM stack of here's your, here's your virtualized platform, run as many instances. The idea is you compress all that into here with a switch fabric in it. And in terms of getting into how that operating system works, um, there are two guys downstairs who stand five feet from me, um, and they'll tell you all about it. I, I just don't have that background. I'm the source fire subject matter expert. Um, I can tell you about that all day, but thanks for the question. Um, so um, one other presentation. Uh, it, the, there'll be a more in-depth presentation on PX Grid at 3 o'clock. Um, I think it's in this room. And then tomorrow there's another uh, presentation on using PX Grid uh, as well. So a couple more things on PX Grid will be covered here in this forum uh, just over the next couple of days. So um, there's more information available, um, and I got plenty of time for questions. Yep. So is there a, do you have a matrix that describes what platforms and, you know, the, all the, the, the first half dozen slides were all the different APIs, yes. like eStreamer and stuff. So, I mean, do you have a kind of a matrix that describes what platforms that reach, those, each one of those reach it? I mean, so, so it seems like a lot of them basically hit the source fire yeah. stuff. So how, 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 do you, how do you find out more about all the, the technical nitty gritty here, right? What works with what? Um, it's under construction, but here's what's available so far, right? Um, so DevNet, on the DevNet forum, there's a PX grid forum now that allows you to, there's a sandbox and you can download a fully functional version of the platform and play with PX Grid, and there's information about the APIs and all that. So that's been completed. Um, a couple weeks ago, the DevNet team helped me finish the, uh, the Firesight um, PX Grid microsite, because these are all microsites, I'm sorry, DevNet microsite, right? These are microsites that allow you to download all the API documentation and give you information about some of the questions you're asking. Um, there is a list on a, a customer-facing list um, here. Right, um, it's not well linked to yet, and it's it's it, it's a little bit flaky. There's some of the some of the catalog listings are a little messed up, but I'm fixing it just over the last couple of weeks. But it is accessible, and you get a list of every partner, and it'll tell you what technologies those partners integrate with. Um, I need a matrix. It's not there yet. There is a table with filters and pull downs that that's getting there, but I can assure you we will get there, and there will be a matrix that will let you look at the whole cybersecurity portfolio and all the relevant APIs, right? So thanks for the question. Um, all right, if, if there aren't any more questions, I'll wrap. I think that's the last slide. That, thank you for your time. That's a ton of information I've thrown at you, and I hope, um, hope I've given you some stuff to think about. Yeah. A number of examples of partnerships uh, here. Oh, OK, let me go back. There you go. Any other questions? Okay, we're good. I'll leave that up. Thanks. <laughs>